here we're going to talk about uh, a common usage case for locks, which is to protect, to protect data structures. And data structures have interesting properties, uh, certain properties that allow you to increase the parallelism when you have multiple people wanting to touch the data structure at the same time. Uh, and that, pro and we we'll look at what that property is. But so let's just consider a shared database. Um, normally, there are two classes of users. So what we're going to do is split the tasks uh, or the classes of users into two. We have readers who never modify the database and writers that read and modify the database. Um, the reader-writer uh, observation is simply that when you have multiple readers accessing the data structure at the same time, um, they do not interfere with each other because they're just reading the database. Right. So if you use a single lock on the whole database, uh, it is sufficient for the program to be correct. But if you have many readers at the same time, then each one is blocked behind the other, even though they don't have to be. Uh, because they're readers, they don't change the database, and so they don't affect each other. So the simple idea is that they're likely to have many readers at the same time, but only one re writer at a time. Okay, So we don't want to just, we want to take each task that the user wants to do uh, classify it whether they are a reader or they are, whether they are a writer, and then go ahead and check if there are lots of readers who want to get into at the same time and let them all go. And if they're writers, then we allow them to get in only one by one. Okay, so let's take a look at the basic reader writer solution, and we'll start by defining the correctness uh, constraints. Okay, so Readers can access the database when there are no writers. Writers can access the database when there are no readers. So readers can access the database, no writers. Writers can access the database when there are no readers. And only one thread manipulates this variables at any given time. So only one thread is allowed to mutate or change the data structure itself, while many of them are allowed to simultaneously read the data structure. So Let's take a look at the basic structure of the solution. Uh, this is the functionality for the reader. So you simply wait until there are no writers. So the first point of observation is that if there is any writer in the system that's already already active, then the readers have to just uh, wait. Okay. Once you finish waiting for all the writers, now you know that if you got past this point that there are no writers in the system, you don't really care if there are any readers uh, because you, all that you're trying to do is read as well. So you go ahead and just access the database. And when you finish any checkout of the system, you wake up any waiting writer that may have appeared in the meantime and is waiting for the readers to finish up. Uh, writers is similar, except that you wait for both active readers and active writers. So remember that if there's anyone changing the data structure, then um, only one of them can do at any given point. Hence, um, a writer needs to wait for both readers and writers, while readers only wait for writers. Uh, and then the writer accesses the database, and when you check out, you wake up both the readers and the writers. Note that that's also a point of difference. With readers, we wake up a waiting writer, while with writers, we wake up both readers and writers. Okay. So let's uh, take a more pro pro programmatic approach to the problem. So I'll define the state variables, and then we'll look at the actual code. So you're going to define four integers. So the first one is a AR, which stands for active readers. The uh, next one is waiting readers, and similarly active writers and waiting writers. So the active indicates uh, that these threads are already in the process of manipulating or accessing the database. Okay. So the number of active readers initially zero could be up to n, you know, where n is the maximum number of uh, threads that could be in the system. Again, number of waiting readers could be 0 to n. Uh, number of active writers it's, is actually a bool. It can only be 0 or 1 because at any given instant, only one writer can manipulate the database itself. And the number of waiting writers, on the other hand, could be up to n. Okay? You can have n threads all wanting to write at the same time. And finally, you have a conditional variable called OK to read, which essentially signals uh, to the readers if they're free to go ahead and access the database. 